Wisconsin Eyes Campaign 2024 programming is sponsored by Wisconsin Counties Association, Nicolay National Bank, Wisconsin Hospital Association, Operating Engineers Local 139, the Wisconsin Realtors Association, the Wisconsin Laborers District Council, and North Central States Regional Council of Carpenters. To support programs like this, please consider a tax-deductible donation at wisi.org slash donate or by texting WISI to 44321. Robert Ralph of Cross Plains is the Republican candidate for the 80th Assembly District. The election is November 5th. Robert Ralph, welcome to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you so much. Thank you for all you guys do. Well, thank you for participating in our candidate interviews. I'll start by asking you, what is your campaign's key message? Why are you running for this office? Well, I'm running because I I feel that it's time. I feel that it's time for some change. I think that I'm ready to address key issues um, that are out amongst voters now. And obviously this is a big election cycle, so a lot of people are ramped up, but more so so people have a voice and they feel that their voice is heard. And, um, and I believe that everybody in the district that I represent uh, should have a seat at the table. So if you're elected, what's an example of a piece of legislation, a bill that would be a priority for you to introduce? For me, um, and i have out doing doors and talking with voters, um, there are so many people. Uh, we've done over, we've done close to 14,000 doors and Everybody is talking about the economy. Everybody's talking about the, the fact that they're, they're taxed so bad. Um, one of the bills that I would like to introduce is um, a bill on lowering our state income tax and seeing if we can do some, uh, some work with that, uh, hopefully bipartisan. But um, I think uh, giving, some, giving everybody um, a little tax break for sure. So if you're elected, you know you're entering during a biennial budget year and the state's projected to have more than a $4 billion surplus. What would be your top two priorities for use of that surplus funding? Well, for one, I think looking into our communities and seeing their overall needs. Um, right now, I know coming from a public service background as a firefighter for 17 years, there are fire departments right now, especially volunteer fire departments, some of our smaller um, municipalities that are struggling. And I mean, equipment is outrageous. To outfit a firefighter is uh, upwards of about $5,000. And that's a new firefighter. And, that's, uh, and so helping our emergency services um, that are protecting our streets, um, you know, putting out our fires, coming to us, uh, to our aid if we're sick, um, making sure that they have all the tools needed, um, and then looking into our communities um, as far as infra infrastructure is concerned. Um, but realistically, I'd like to see it go back to the communities, back to the people, back to the pack, back to the taxpayers. You mentioned income tax as an area of interest. What would your reform look like? Who would you want to be benefiting? Realistically, everybody. Um, I, you know, I feel that everybody that pays income tax um, or you know taxes in general are um, affected by the the tax hikes that have taken place, um, and with the economy the way it is and how unstable the 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 rise in costs have been um, it's just so important right now to give those give people a break in you know so they can sustain living it's it's been so hard going out and listening to retirees that have to come out of retirement and because they're concerned that their retirement is going to run out or that they have to pick up a second job, you know, to supplement uh, because of the rising costs. 
Um, so inflation as a whole uh, just shouldn't be there. You know, people say I want to cut inflation in half or I want to decrease inflation. You know, I'd like to end inflation altogether. K-12 education is a top issue for many voters. Where does K-12 education fit into your platform? That's a very good question, and it's so important to me. Um, I worked in the Madison Metropolitan School District for a long time. I coached basketball for 19 years, uh, 16 in high school at the high school level, 19 or three at the college level. And working in the Madison School District, um, I also had a great education K through 12 here in Madison. And so I'm for school choice. Um, I believe that parents should have the say on where their child attends school. But at the same point, I don't think that we should choke hold the public school funding either. And you know, uh, there are so many good teachers across the state of Wisconsin, uh, there really are. And the fact that they have to reach into their own pockets to go out and buy school supplies for their classroom, um, do you support it just shouldn't be. increasing funding for K-12 education this time around? I, I do. I really do. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I am. What about higher education, the state's system of universities, two-year colleges, technical colleges? What does the future of that system look like to you, and where do you think the legislature should focus? I think the focal point of the legislature right now should be on the technical school and the two-year programs that are out there. Um, the technical schools kind of get a, they, they kind of get a, the short end of the stick at times. Um, and, you know, there are so many kids that come out of high school and they want to work. You know, um, a lot of kids that come from, you know, less fortunate families that you know, they want to contribute as fast as possible. And um, I know coming from working in the trades uh, myself, um, they're, they're so vital. We're always going to need our electricians, our carpenters, our law enforcement officers, uh, law enforcement officers uh, the fire academy, nurses. Um, so I think that it's so important that we look at the technical school and try and work with combining the technical uh, programs with the, the schools. To um, your colleges? Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially in trades. What do you see as the state's largest workforce development challenge and how would you propose to address it? I think the challenge is getting people, um, making sure that, they're, that jobs are available making sure that employers can uh, be able to have the, not have the restraints so bad that they, you know, uh, that they can't grow to be able to hire more um, and making sure that we have people that are uh, out working is, is key. Is there I some think. state policy change that would help address those challenges? Well, I think right now, um, you know, we had the pandemic, and it, you know it was unfortunate. We lost a lot of lives. I lost my mother um, in 2020, and you know it, it was a horrible time. And I think that we are, you know, I think we're still recovering from it. But at some point, there needs to be a new normal, and what that new normal looks like, um, you know, we're still trying to figure out, but. Getting people, uh, you know, back to work. Um, you think there are some people sitting out? I, that I think that we pay more people to sit home than we do to encourage them into programs that are, can get them back into the workforce. Sure. Uh, more, a few more workforce questions for you. Investments in public and energy infrastructure grow our state's economy. This also provides an opportunity to invest in our state's workforce, but currently there are no requirements for hiring local workers. Would you support a state resident hiring requirement for state, local, and utility scale infrastructure investments? Uh, yeah, I think it's really important that we look at local. I really do. Um, you know, I, I, federal is great, you know, working in the construction uh, trade. Um, you know, there are, we've got some great local companies that, you know, across the board, statewide, that uh, provide 
wonderful resources when it comes to construction, whether it's road construction, whether it's um, you know building high high end apartments or any kind of impart you know office buildings uh, so a hiring et cetera. requirement could help to keep those jobs local is that what you're saying absolutely I think keeping them home uh, you know if possible if we can that would be a great it would be a great boost for the state in, in itself employee classification is an issue in the construction industry some employers misclassify workers as independent contractors or pay them in cash off the books this lowers costs by avoiding payroll taxes and unemployment insurance and it puts compliant companies at a disadvantage when bidding on projects plus misclassified workers may be denied minimum wage protections or overtime pay are you aware of this issue and what should be done about it i am um, and it's it's very unfortunate that this is taking place and you know I'm all for the the local handyman right but when it comes to a, a business of in, in a sense uh, you really need to f you really need to to follow the guidelines you know we have OSHA MSHA we have all these you know companies that are out there that make sure that safety is important and key um, but it's so important that you, you know, if if I'm an electrician, and I'm licensed in in electricity uh, to be an electrician. I'm not going to, you know, unless I'm. Yeah, I mean, I think that you should stay in your lane um, because it just. Uh, it, does the state have a role in kind of regulating that problem? It does. It does absolutely, mm -hmm. and you know, and there's and there's ways that we can. Uh, clamp down on that a little bit and and to make sure that that's that's followed but you know I especially when you mention compensate uh, workers compensation there's a lawsuit going on right now with a, a construction company in Rock County where un unfortunately uh, a worker lost his legs in an accident and had that company not been able to have you know a, a good workman's compensation program who knows where that would end up? I mean, it's going to be in court for a long time, but uh, it's you know, it's accidents like that, th simple things that can happen just at the blink of an eye. Let me ask you about housing. Affordable rental housing is an issue in Wisconsin, and some support government-imposed rent control to maintain affordability, while others argue keeping rent artificially low will decrease rental supply, resulting in increased prices. What is your sense of housing as an issue, and what do you think best addresses rental housing affordability? Is it rent control, building more rentals, or some other solution? Well, my district, I, I know that I can speak for Dane County. I've been in Dane County practically all my life. Um, and with the district that I have, we've got a wide range of uh, apartment complexes that are going up seems like it all the time every time you turn around you drive down a street and there's another apartment complex going up um, I think as long as uh, the the key is the management of the apartments um, I don't like to dictate what somebody makes on you know if I build an apartment complex and you know I want you know I prefer it to be more of a high-end apartment or you know, I don't think that we should uh, dictate it as far as what people, you know, or put a cap on uh, rental units. Uh, there are some seniors that just, they sold their home and they would prefer to rent. They don't want to do the lawn anymore. They don't want to worry about snow removal. Is there a way um, to make rent more affordable then? Do you support building more rental units, the state incentivizing that? I think that we do already. Um, and you know, there is a matter of fact, just down the street here in in uh, in Madison, uh, Bayview Apartments was a WIDA project that Governor Evers put together, and uh, it's a it's a great new neighborhood. Um, and you know, so I I do afford you know I I do support affordable housing. I think that it's important. Um, but again, like I said before, they need to be managed right. Um, there's an apartment complex uh, over off of Tree Lane on the west side of Madison that had heavy crime, and it was just mismanaged. Um, it was uh, the whole building was affordable housing, um, 
and there were so many police calls that they basically, you know, had to shut it down and evict uh, over 90 percent of the uh, the families in the home, which is unfortunate, especially if you have a single mother with, uh, or a single parent, for that matter, with, with kids that, you know, are affected by that. Sure. Well, moving on to health care, medical systems are facing numerous headwinds in the form of inflation, workforce development, and issues around Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement resulting in fewer services and even the closure of a hospital system in western Wisconsin. What would you do to preserve access to care and prevent future closures? Well, that was an unfortunate situation that it took place, and I think it was up in the Eau Claire region, if I remember right. Okay. Um, but I, it's really unfortunate that that happened. And I think that there, we need to take a hard look at making sure that that the proper health care is available um, to people, whether they live in urban areas, rural areas, and, you Do know... Do you support increasing the Medicaid reimbursement to hospitals? Um, I do. I, you know, I, I think that right now, I, I mean, I, I went through that when I lost my father, um, you know, uh, Medicaid, he switched from Medicaid to Medicare, um, but we still owed, you know, several, t you know, tens of thousands of dollars to Medicaid. Um, and, but I think getting people moved over to Medicare a little bit quicker or, Modifying Medicaid is to where we can be you know, reimburse the hospitals in a timely manner, um, or the facilities um, is 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 an important issue. What about mental health care? That's also a growing concern for Wisconsinites and for state and county budgets. What are you hearing about mental health care in your district, and what are some solutions? It's a it's a another key thing that with my uh, campaign. Um, that is left in the dark. I think it, it's it's something that isn't talked about enough. Um, a very close friend of mine that I worked with that is endorsed my campaign was the special education uh, director for the Madison School District. One of the things that we talked about was that in K through 12, you know, with all the changes going on in curriculum and things that students uh, can access nowadays on social media, um, bullying, you know, those type of things. Um, you know, making sure that there's proper, there's proper licensed um, psychotherapy uh, people. You know, I know in the school district, um, when I worked as a safety and security coordinator, I dealt a lot with IEP students that, that had IEPs or behavioral interven interventional programs and schools need more resources for mental so they health? do they need you know we need to make sure that there's enough counseling available per student to be able to you know one counselor for a student of a thousand kids isn't enough and making that person available um, in the in the time of need is really important and it also is important to, um, for me um, with our veterans. You know, I, I know so many people I heard, so, you know, and I constantly hear these stories of veterans that come back with PTSD and are on a waiting list to get in and see somebody. Need more professionals and, in Wisconsin? Right. And Let we me need to offer you that. On to abortion policy. How should Wisconsin move forward on the issue of abortion? Well, this is going to come up every election cycle. It really is. And, you know, Wisconsin has a 20, you know, a, a 20 week law that's out there right now. You support that? Um, I do. I think that um, the mother does have a right to choose. Um, when, you know, myself, I, I, I grew up as a Catholic. Um, but there's a lot of instances, obviously, exceptions, you know, that are out there with uh, rape, incest, um, life of the mother, and I've, you know, I'm sure I'm not the per first person to say that, you, you know, support from that, those um, exceptions. But I, I definitely do. But I also think that women's health care is important and, and it's key, um, and it shouldn't be excluded. 
um, I definitely oppose a, uh, a ban on abortion um, nationwide. Um, I think that's the wrong way to go. But I think we need to come together. It's in the hands of the state. And, um, you know, I, I, just, I, I don't support, you know, anything past 20 weeks, but. Sure. Let me ask you about transportation. What are the pressing transportation needs in your district and how important is it that they are addressed and for the state to keep on schedule with reconstruction of in aging interstates and significant quarters of commerce? Well, for one, we need to, um, and I think we're doing a good job of that right now, um, but getting from point A to point B is important. Um, you know, and I think right now, um, Madison is growing with their transit system um, for public transportation. Um, I know that a lot of, uh, a lot of people, you know, bike to work, um, you know, they use that sort of thing. Do you support Not, more investment in public transportation in your district? I would like to see. I would like to see it expand. I know that it is in Verona, um, and they do come out to Epic, um, for example. Um, you know, the communities around Madison are growing rapidly. And so it's something that we need to take a deep look at to making sure that people, you know, because a lot of people commute and, you know, making sure that they can still get to work and still be able to live outside of the city of Madison is important. What about PFAS and other water contaminants? They're a concern for a growing number of Wisconsinites. Do you see this as an important issue and how would you address it? It is important. Um, you know, it, it's so important. I, I think that everybody has the right to breathe clean air, to drink clean water, to be able to, uh, to, be able to plant a garden in clean soil. And, you know, and so taking care of our environment should be everybody's job. Priority for, the, for state funding? I, th I think funding, we should take a look at it. You know, where is the strongest need? I know that there are aging sewer systems that cannot keep up with the demand on the growing communities out there, you know, currently right now. And so the wastewater, you know, that sort of thing, making sure that, you know, that's handled in the right way um, is very important. So again, taking a, look at, taking a look at the growing communities and what their needs are. We are down to our final two questions. What is uh, the leading difference between you and your opponent? Well, I think that the fact that I've, I've been out there and I, I, I wanna say I've, I've been there and done that. You know, I've worked in education, I've worked with kids for 19 years, um, I've worked in the trades, I've, uh, you know, I, I've been a firefighter, I've worked in public service. Um, so being a first responder, working in education, working in the trades, and being in business um, gives me, I think, a good sense of an edge on really what those areas need. And, you know, I want to, I want to be a voice for everybody in the district, not just, you know, I don't want to be a, you know, a, one of those a niche uh, pers people in office that represents a select few. Um, I know that Mike Bear is new, you know, new to the legislature, um, I think one term. Um, I know that he's very progressive. Um, I would like to work more across the aisle. I well, really would. Speaking of that, our final question is if you're elected and you get a magic wand and that lets you resolve one issue in a way that brings the parties together, what's the issue that you would work on to resolve? Taking care of our seniors and our veterans. I think that's key. I just think that it's you know making sure that our, our veterans aren't homeless, making sure they have the resources they need, making sure that seniors have, uh, you know, can live a good, comfortable life without having to worry. Um, and unity, we've got to work together. That's the only way we're going to accomplish things. All right. Thank you, Robert Ralph of Cross Plains, the Republican candidate for the 80th Assembly District. The election is November 5th. Robert Ralph, thank you for talking with Wisconsin Eye. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. This programming is brought to you by our generous sponsors. 
Thank you for watching.